Hi Year 6, this is a uh, quite long video actually, but it will explain all of the methods on Snappy Maths. Something I've noticed over the last few weeks is there's a few children who are struggling with the individual methods, especially when it comes to the fractions on Snappy Maths. Um, none of this is new learning, everything is a recap. Um, I might call something slightly different than your teacher normally calls it, but that doesn't make any difference to the method, the method still stays the same. My hope is that you'll be able to use this video um, every day when you do your snappy maths. If there's a question that you can't do or a question you're not sure on, you can open this video and you can kind of skim and scan and skip the video and find the question you need support with. Watch that bit and you should be ready to go. So let's get started, shall we? Because we've got lots to go through. First one then, divide by the bottom and multiply by the top when we're finding fractions of an amount. Okay, what well, one first thing we need to remember is that of means multiply, okay? So 7 ninths multiplied by 63, 7 ninths of 63, it means the same thing. When we're, when we're finding a fraction of an amount, it's really important to remember that your answer will always be a whole number, okay? It might end up having a small decimal, but it will never be a fraction, it will always have a whole number in it. So, 7 ninths times by 63 or multiply by 63 whichever one you want to say or of 63 first thing we do is divide by the bottom so we're doing 63 divided by 9 and we know that 63 divided by 9 equals 7 when we've done that we're going to do that multiplied by the top so we should end up with 7 multiplied by 7 which we know equals 49 Okay, so my answer is 49, because I have divided by the bottom, 63 divided by 9, so 63 divided by 9, and then we've equal 7, and then we've done 7 multiplied by 7. Okay, so divide by the bottom and times by the top. Next one then, method A. So we are multiplying fractions and whole numbers here. So that is method A. Mr. Bailey and Miss Barnard might call it something slightly different, but in 60, we do call this method A. Before we move on to this question though, let's just have a really quick recap of how we actually multiply fractions when there's whole, no whole numbers involved. So let's go for this one. If it's um, just fractions and we are multiplying, the method is we multiply across. So in 6e, we have some flapping arm movement that we do, which helps us to remember how to do this, okay? Um, but we simply just multiply across. So this answer would be 1 times 2 equals 2, and 3 times 3 equals 9. So the answer would be 2 ninths, and it is simple as that. However, it is slightly different when we are doing um, multiplying fractions with whole numbers. So in this instance here of this question, so 2 and 2 thirds multiplied by 5, we're going to use method A, which means we need to get rid of these whole num this whole number here because it's in the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to do 2 multiplied by 5 equals 10. And in 6e, we always put a circle around it, even though it looks a bit messy in our books, because it reminds us that this we're not finished with this, we're going to come back to it later. Now we're doing 2 thirds multiplied by 5. We know that multiply also means of, so it could be 2 thirds of 5, depends on how you want to say it. So 2 thirds multiplied by 5, we multiply across. 2 times 5 equals 10. 3 times by nothing, because there's nothing there, is 3. So now I hope that you have noticed that 10 thirds is not okay. That is an improper fraction, and we do not like improper fractions when we are playing with this sort of thing. So we need to change it into a mixed number. And we do that by looking at the denominator is 3. So 3 is our whole one. So how many of those 3s can I get into 10? So 3, 6, 9, there is 3 of them, and there is one little one left over. So there's one third left over. So going back to our circle from earlier, we've got a 10, and we've got a 3 and 1 third. So my answer has to be 13 and 1 third. Okay, so my answer is 13 and 1 third. That is method A. Method A is when we do the whole numbers first. That's what method A means, okay? We always use method A when we're multiplying. 
Okay, next one, dividing fractions. So, dividing fractions, six equal, this is the shelf method, and I'll show you why in a second. So, three, six, uh, three eighths, I apologize. Three eighths divided by four equals. So, I'm just going to change the color of my pen so it's nice and clear. The reason why six equal this is a shelf method is because there actually is no division within this question at the minute. Okay, so what we do is we make a shelf. And that means that the fraction line and the division line make us a sort of shelf. And it's just a way for us to remember those different methods. And it's also a great way for your teachers to kind of remind you. And um, if you're in a test condition or anything else, we can just say the word shelf. And hopefully that will come flooding back to you how to do that. So we draw the shelf, we get rid of that division. And we bring our 4 down under here. And we do 8 multiplied by 4. So actually we are not dividing. So 8 multiplied by 4 equals 32. And our numerator stays the same. Okay, so that is one method. That is the shelf method for dividing fractions. Remember that we bring the um, whole number down and we multiply it. However, there is also another method. If you have a more, if you have one that looks like this. Six eighths divided by three. Okay, and what is slightly different about this one is that we can see that this three here divides into this six. So we can actually do six divided by three, which equals two, and then the denominator actually stays the same because this and the three have a connection. Okay, so it's always a good idea to check whether that six and that three have a connection. If they don't, like here, three and four do not have a connection, they cannot be divided, then you need to go to the shelf method. If you would rather just stick with the shelf method, you will still get the right answer. You might just need to simplify. Okay. Right, let's have a look then. So next one is adding fractions. When we add and subtract fractions, the denominator must be the same. And I know in um, the year six classes, we chant this over and over again. It's something that is completely and utterly ingrained into our brains. So two thirds adds four fifths. So I'm gonna show you how to do this with the method that obviously 6E do. Miss Barnard and Mr. Bailey may do it slightly differently, but it doesn't matter as long as the method is correct. So three and five, we are looking for a common multiple in the three and the five times table. I know that that common multiple is going to be 15 because my denominators need to be the same, okay? So we are adding. Now what we need to do is we need to work out how did I get from 3 to 15? Well, I know that I times it by 5, so I need to do that to the top as well. 2 times by 5 equals 10. And we've got 5 to 15. How did I get from 5 to 15? It's times by 3. So 4 times by 3 equals 12, okay? So now we have a calculation that we can actually answer. We have an addition with fractions and they both have the same denominator. So when we're adding and subtracting fractions, the denominator stays the same. 15 stays the same. 10 add 12 equals 22. And I hope that you can all see that that is obviously an improper fraction. It is top heavy. So we need to change it into a mixed number. 15 is our whole, so 15 out of 15 is a whole one. So how many holes are there in that fraction? How many 15s go into 22? And I'm hoping you can recognise that that's obviously one. And there are seven 15ths left over. Okay, so your answer is one and seven 15ths. So when you add those fractions together, the answer is one and seven 15 Okay, let's have a look then. So what about adding and subtracting fractions when there's whole numbers involved? This is a whole different kettle of fish now, okay? Same things applies in terms of when adding and subtracting fractions, the denominator stays the same. So let's have a look at the add first, okay? We are using method A. So 6E, we call this method A. Mr. Bailey and Miss Barnard's class, don't worry, you might call it something different, but you'll recognise it. So first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of these little um, whole numbers that are in the way. So three, add two equals five. And we'll put a circle around it because it means come back to it later. Now we're doing four fifths, I'm gonna run out of space I think, add one quarter. So first thing I need to do is I need to find a common denominator for five and four, which I know is 20. 
I apologize if you can hear my kittens scratching in the background. Okay, so how do I get from five to 20? Or well, we know we times by four. Four times four is 16. How do we get from four to 20? We times by five. One times five is five. So when we're adding and subtracting fractions, the denominator stays the same. 16 out of 5 equals 21. So once again, we have, got a we have got a numerator that is bigger than our denominator. We've got an improper fraction. How many 20s go into 21? Well, we know it's 1 with 1 20th left over. That is not our answer, remember, because we've got that little circle that means we need to go back to it. So our actual answer is going to be 5 add 1 equals 6 and 1 20th. Okay, that is our actual answer. Don't forget your circle, you need to go back to it. So when we're adding and multiplying, when our numbers are getting bigger, we can use method A with the circle. OK, we can use that with the circle. However, method B is going to be slightly different. OK, so when we're taking away, our numbers are getting smaller. Sometimes method A works, sometimes it doesn't. I would always encourage you to have a go at method B just to save yourself some time. So method B means that we need to change two and eight ninths into an improper fraction. At the minute, it's a mixed number and we're going to change it into an improper fraction. And the way that we do this is we multiply by the bottom. Okay, so we do 9 times 2 and then we add the top because we've got two lots of the holes, which is two nines, isn't it? Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to do 2 times 9, which we know is 18. Okay, so 2 times 9 equals 18 and then we're going to add 8, which we know is 26. So it's going to become 26 ninths. Okay. And we are taking away, now we're taking away this one. So now we need to make this one into an, um, an improper fraction. So we'll multiply by the bottom and then we add on to the top. Okay. So 3 times 1 is 3, add 1 is 4. So we've got 4 thirds. So back to what we learned earlier. When adding and subtracting fractions, the denominator must be the same. So 9 and 3 is my denominator, so I'm going to make them both 9, because 9 is a common multiple of 9 and 3, or a common factor. So let's have a look. That one stays the same, because it's still got 9 as the denominator. How do you get from 3 to 9? Well, we times by 3. 4 times 3 equals 12. Okay, so we're going to work this out. Denominator stays the same. 26 take away 12, or well, 26 take away 10 is 16. Take away 2 um, is obviously going to be 14. So we've got 14 ninths, which we then, don't forget, need to change so that it is not improper. How many nines go into 14? Well, it's going to be 1, isn't it, with 5 left over. Okay, I hope that um, makes some sense to you. And like I said, this is the six E's method. Okay, so this is how we would set it out in our maths books. This is how I've taught year six to set this out. However, Mr. Bailey and Miss Barnard may do that slightly differently. So don't worry um, if you do it across or um, you do it in a slightly different way. As long as you're getting the right answer, that's all that counts at the end of the day. So let's have a look at the next one together then. Oh, line method, my favourite. Okay, so we've had a few children getting um, questions incorrect where they are having to multiply or divide by 10, 100 and 1,000. Okay, so this is the method that you need to use when you are multiplying or dividing by 10, 100 or 1,000. So this is our example, 8.3. Four, and we are multiplying by 100, okay? What's really, really important here is that we are not moving the decimal point, okay? We don't move the decimal point and we certainly do not add zeros, okay? So be careful if you're explaining this to somebody else or a parent's trying to help you. If they're saying things like add the zeros or move the decimal point, just explain to them that that's not how we do it in our school and we have to make sure we use the line method. 
So if we are multiplying by 100, that means our number is getting bigger. So if it's getting bigger, we are going to move this way. If I was dividing, my number would be getting smaller, so my digits would be moving this way. Okay, but obviously we are multiplying today, so we're going this way. First thing I need to do is look, I'm divided, I'm multiplying by 100, so how many zeros has it got? It's got two, so I need to draw two lines. Okay, my next job is I need to move all of my digits across to my lines. So my decimal point never moves, ever, ever, ever. Okay, it is still as a soldier, it will never move. But my digits do, okay, my numbers move. So my eight moves right across to the far line. My three moves across to the far line. And my four moves across to the far line. That eight represents a line. It represents a place value, ones, tens, and hundreds. So we move that across. Right, let's have a go at another one, just so that we can see it if we were dividing. So let's say that we are doing um, 43 divided by 100. Okay, so 43, we know that the decimal point is after the ones column. That three is in your ones, ones, tens. So there's always decimal point there. You can't see it because it's invisible, but it's always there, okay? There's always a decimal point. We are dividing by 100, so our number is getting smaller, so we are moving this way. And there are two zeros, okay? So I'm going to draw two lines. Now I'm moving all my digits, so my three moves right across to the far line as far as it can go. My four moves across as far as it can go. And then I put my decimal point in, which obviously doesn't move. All I need to recognise here is now is that I've got a space in my ones column. There always needs to be a number there. So if there's no value, we know that we can use a placeholder, a zero placeholder. So the answer would be 0 0.43. And that is the line method. And we call it the line method because we draw the lines. Okay, next one, bod mass. I've had a few questions about this. I've had a few children message me and say that the answers are wrong on the on the um, snappy math sheet because they've forgotten about bod mass. Bod mass stands for brackets, orders, so that means squared um, or cubed, division and multiplication. They go together. They are the same power, so they can be done in either order, division or multiplication. And then addition and subtraction, again, they have the same amount of power, quite weak there at the end. The idea is, if there is more than one operation, you must stop before you do the calculation and use back bod mass. Okay, so look, there's a division, there's a takeaway, and there's a bracket, we have to use bod mass. There's a multiply, there's an add, and there's brackets, we have to use bod mass. Okay, so what bod mass means is the order in which you do your operation. Brackets always come first. No matter what, brackets have the most power. We do the brackets first. Then if there's any orders or indices, okay, so squared and cubed, then we do those. Once we've done that, we can look for division and multiplication. They can be done in either order. Then we look for addition and subtraction, and again, they can be done in either order. So let's have a look at this question. 50 divided by 20 take away 15. Okay, our brains make us want to do 50 take away 20, 50 divided by 20 divided by 15. That is incorrect. We need to look at Bob Mass. The brackets come first. So 20 take away 15 equals 5. And we are left with, and I always tell my class to cross it out because it just makes it easier. 50 divided by 5. Okay, so 50 divided by 5 equals 10. Okay, so the answer is 10. Here then, again, we've got brackets. Brackets come first. 4 add 4 is 8. 8 times 2 or 2 times 8, depends on how you want to say it. It's cumulative, can be done any way, equals 16. Okay, sometimes there won't be a bracket, and that's okay. It doesn't matter, okay? Um, there was a question, I think it was on yesterday's snappy maths where there was no bracket if there's no bracket you move on and you do the orders first if there's no orders then you have to do the division and the multiplication first which is what i think was um tripping children up yesterday make sure that you do the division and the multiplication then you do the addition and subtraction it has to be done in this order otherwise the answer is incorrect 
Okay, long multiplication. Okay, so long multiplication, um, it can be done by two digit by two digit or three digit by two digit. So let's have a little go at doing this together. Okay, so if we're doing, uh, just to make sure I've got enough space, 22, 26 multiplied. Make, trying to keep my lines as straight as I can for you, and I apologise. So, first thing we do, 2 times 6 equals 12. So, we leave our 2, okay, and we carry across our 1. 6 times 2 again is 12, add the 1 equals 13, okay? So, we draw our line. Now, because we're doing long division, we are now not doing 2 times by 2, because that 2 is in the tens column. We are actually multiplying by 20, so we need a placeholder zero in the ones column. 2 times 2 is 4, or you could say 20 times by 2 is 40, okay? 2 times 2 again is 4. When you've done that far, it's time to do the adding, okay? So we need to add these numbers together. 2, 3 add 4 is 7, 1 add 4 is 5. The answer is 572. Okay, so same thing here, just these numbers are slightly trickier, okay? That's all it is. The numbers are just trickier. So try not to get yourselves um, in too much of a rut. Just take it nice and slow. If you need to write out the multiplications, you can. If you need to use a multiplication grid, you can. Um, this is a nice point for me to say. Make sure you're on doing lots of TT rock stars because um, that's really going to help you with these multiplications. Uh, especially if you let parents know that this is the reason why we do TT rock stars because it does help us with these methods. So 2 times 2 equals 4. 2 times 7 equals 14. So we put our 4, carry the 1. 2 times 5 equals 10. Add the cheeky 1 equals 11. So we put our 11 in. And then we draw our line. Remember, now we're doing 9 times by 2. But it's not actually a 9. It's a 90 because it's in the tens column. So we need a placeholder 0. 9 times by 2. Okay, so 9 times by 2 equals 18. Carry that one across. Now we're doing 9 times 7, which equals 63. Add the 1 is 64. You can see these numbers are much bigger, and this is what's going to cause us those issues. This is why we need to be on TT Rockstars every day. Um, 9 times 5 equals 45. Add the 6 is going to equal 51. Draw my line again. And now I'm adding. Okay, so my final step is I need to add both these numbers. So 4, 12, carry the 1, 6, 2, 5. Okay, so the answer is 52,624. I hope that's helped with the multiplication. Just remember to take your time, okay? Really take your time. Okay, division. We'll start with short division, and then I will give you an example of long division. So, 4, 5, 6, and we are dividing by 4. So, I know that... Myself and Mr. Bailey call this the bus stop method. I know Miss, ba Miss Barnard is not a fan. She likes to call it short division. But whatever your teacher calls it, it is the same method. So, bus stop method. I like it as a bus stop method because it looks like four, five and six are all sat in the little bus um, stop waiting for their bus to arrive. Four into four goes one time. Okay, no remainders, nothing to carry across. Four into five goes one time with one left to carry across. 4 into 16 goes 4 times. Nothing left over. The answer is 114. Okay, so short division is nice and easy. Sometimes you might have a remainder. Or remember, if you want to now, if you, you now know how to do your decimal points. So if there was a remainder, you could carry across, add your zero placeholder, um, and give your answer as a decimal, which is definitely push into that year 6, year 7 work. Um, so getting ourselves ready for secondary school. Next one then, we are doing a long division. So I've got a few things written down here for you just to remind you. Make sure you've written out your multiples before starting. Do not attempt to do this sort of question without writing your 42 times table. 
okay? You need to write it out. As a teacher, I would not be able to answer this without my 42 times table worked out. You might need to do repeated addition, okay? Or now you're at home, you might be able to ask somebody to help you. Whatever you need to do to write out those multiples, that's what you do first. So we're going to go for, and I'm hoping this is going to fit on here, but we will see. If it doesn't, we'll work it out. Not the end of the world. Okay, so we start with the bus stop method. Because it is still bus stop, it just looks ever so different. Right, I'm going to change colour of my pen just so you can see it really clearly. First thing we do, 42 into 8. We know it goes zero times. Rather than carrying across the 8 and writing 88 here, we are just going to look at it as 88 like this. How many 42s go into 88? So here, this is where I'm going to use my multiples. I know that it's 84, okay? So this is where we come to our little rhyme. Yes, 6 uh, e say this. Other classes, you might not, but it might be something that helps you. So the first thing we do is we write how many. So we write how many? 1, 2. So write how many. Then we write the multiple. Then we take away. Okay, so this is the this is a chant that 60 do that helps us to remember each of the stages of long division. So we write how many, we write the multiple, then we take away. And it's here for you to remember. We write how many, write the multiple, and take away. So 8 take away 4 equals 4. 8 take away 8 equals 0. Okay, at this point now, we are doing the next step, which is we are bringing that 5 down to the party, okay? We are bringing the 5 down so that it sits directly next to the 4. So that number has now become 45, okay? So we do the same thing. We come back to the chant. We write how many. So how many 42s go into 45? Well, we know it's 1. So we write how many. We write the multiple. And we take away, okay? And we take away. So 5 take away 2 equals 3 equals zero okay and then we bring this down here to the pantry okay with a two so how many 42s go into through 32 well it's going to be zero isn't it okay there's going to be none so there's zero multiples so this has a remainder of 32 okay so it has a remainder of 32 okay right let's okay connective thinking so 0 0.5 times by 28 you'll remember earlier on in the video i told you that multiply also means of okay so thinking about connective thinking what have you learned about 0 0.5 over the last couple of weeks and i'm hoping that you can recognize 0 0.5 is the same as one half okay so the question here isn't actually 0 0.5 times by 28 it's actually what is half of 28 and that you should be able to do half 28 28 divided by 2 and it must equal 14. okay next one 4.2 multiplied by 20. Okay, if you remember earlier on in the video, we did the line method. Okay, so I would always do 42, 4.2 times by 10 to start with. So move all of your digits. Okay, so 4.2, getting bigger, move across, equals 42. So the answer is 42, but we need it to be 20. So the relationship between 10 to 20 is times by 2. So we're going to do 42 times by 2. Equals 84. Okay, so connective thinking. Instead of doing trying to do it times 20, times it by 10 and times it by 2. If you were going to times it by 30, you times it by 10, and then times it by 3. If it was times by 200, you would times it by 100, and then times it by 2. Okay, so you're thinking about all of those connective thinking links. 
so that is the end of our notebook um, and the end of obviously our presentation I hope that that has helped you if you remember if you need any support with any of these snacky mouse questions use this video to help you and it's a great one for you to show to parents so they know what methods you should be using as well okay remember to mark your snappy mask before sending it to your teacher so that they can help you with the questions that you have got incorrect okay look after yourselves and stay safe